The devil was once the most favored of the host of angels serving the Lord. But pride welled in his breast. He thought it unseemly for him to serve. The devil and his band of followers who likewise suffered the sin of pride were defeated in battle by the Lord and his host and were banished to the outermost depths of hell, never to know the presence of the Lord or look on heaven again. Smarting with his wounds, but all the more swollen with pride, the devil cried out from the depths, it is better to rule in hell than serve in heaven. The devil proclaimed what was lost in heaven would be gained on earth. He said, my offspring, the gargoyles, will one day rule the Lord's works, earth and man. And so it came to pass that while man ruled on earth, the gargoyles waited, lurking, hidden from the light. Reborn every 600 years in man's reckoning of time, the gargoyles joined battle against man to gain dominion over the earth. In each coming, the gargoyles were nearly destroyed by men who flourished in greater numbers. Now it has been so many hundreds of years that it seems the ancient statues and paintings of gargoyles are just products of man's imagination. In this year, with man's thoughts turned toward the many ills he has brought upon himself, man has forgotten his most ancient adversary, the gargoyles. So glad you decided to join me. And bring me Kalamudri. You think I'd miss a trip to Mexico with you? Well, I don't suppose your mother wanted you to come, hmm? She doesn't know. I don't see her much since she married old Jim. Yeah, must be quite a change for her. I think she misses the traveling with you. I know I do. Well, here we are, on our way. Kalamudri will just about complete my collection of demons. Thank you, darling. I saw you on that TV talk show. Did you? <laughs> I'm glad. Kind of hope you were watching. What did you think of that uh, self-styled witch they had on with me? You were, as always, the cool intellectual. She got pretty upset when you started telling her she was just being superstitious about the devil. Do you really think the world of evil is just fantasy? Who knows? It sells my books. You should have read some of the letters I got at the university after that one. I decided to call it 5,000 Years of Demonology. I'm going to try to trace man's conception of evil from uh, 3,000 B.C. to the present. We'll start next month with uh, Mayan and Aztec ruins. 
Sounds like another big seller from Professor Mercer Bowley. Yep. More monsters for fun and profit. Our publisher is planning on putting it out for the next Christmas season. You know, uh, something colorful and expensive for the coffee tables of America. My sexy pictures in your dry as dust press? Ah. Uh, when do we start? Well, I've just got to check out this old guy. Uh, I don't know, he's got some wild story. Maybe it's nothing, but uh, it's only a bit out of our way. How did that happen? We're lost? No, I must have taken a wrong turn back there. I sure would hate to get stuck out here in the dark. Oh, don't worry. I know what I did wrong. We'll double back about five miles. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, take the other turn. serving for lunch. <laughs> I wonder which one he's trying to sell me. The only one I'm enthusiastic about is the beer. Desert fish. <laughs> <laughs> that Dr. Bowley? Yeah. You boss. I was expecting anyone else. Mr. Leverett, this is my daughter Diana. Well, now, ain't that nice? Why don't I just get you some beers? Hmm, sounds good. Well, <clears throat> did you come to uh, talk or not? I came to hear you talk. You know, Dr. Bowley, yeah. you uh, took your own sweet time about getting here. Not that I hold it against you. But my time is valuable, too, not just yours. No, sir, I've got quite a business here. Why don't you just take a look around? That's a real live 11-button killer, little lady. Uh, Mr. Leverett, you wrote me that uh, you had some Indian artifacts and transcripts of authentic uh, exorcism rites. Yes, sir. I've seen you on this TV talk show. And I was impressed with your brains and your know-how. Wrote to you right off to that university where you uh, teach. Uh, are, are these your uh, artifacts, this stuff? You know, we've come a long way. I really Don't get hot under the collar. Don't pay no mind to this junk. This is for the tourists. Well, we're not tourists, so if you have something to show me... Why don't we just sit down and finish our beer? Now, Mr. Leverett. If you have something worth my while, please get to the point. Otherwise, we'll have to be leaving. Now, now don't rush me. I don't know which way to turn. I thought we'd 
talk it over and we'd uh, write this book that I have in mind. You know, Uncle Willie's uh, Tales of the Desert. Well, thank you. Now, wait a minute. We've got to better realize I've got to check you out to see if you're on the level. I am. You're not just out here to steal my discovery. Don't worry about it. But I do worry about it, Dr. Bowley. Now, Lord. But now, wait a minute. I'll show it to you. It's in the shack over there. Can't we just take a look? Lead on. You, you should have seen this place 20, 25 years ago. You know, I had it all painted up. I had myself a two-headed calf, too. And a Siamese twin chicken. Made my own cider. Why, I tell you, I pulled them in off the road. You know, uh, people always like to have something to stare at. Uh, to scare them. Why, nobody ever went west on a vacation without stopping at Uncle Willie's Desert Museum. Yes, sir. Then, high, highway branch went the other way. Just passed me by. And you know what happened then? Just like that, they all forgot. Wait a minute, wait till I get some light in here. Just stumbling over something in the dark. Hmm. Bones. I smell old bones. I knew I'd picked a smart one. Sure is lonely out here. Oh, I like it like that. I own this place outright. I got my pension. Pass my time thinking about a book I'm going to write. You just wouldn't believe the things I know. Things that I've never told anybody. Just been saving up till the right moment. You'll see. You'll see you'll be glad you came to see old Willie. What is it? I just got it put back together again. What do you mean, put back together again? That never was together. <laughs> you assembled that out of a pile of old junk bones. No. I found it whole over in the canyon. Carted it back in my pickup. But you can't imagine how hard difficult it is to match them bones to... Oh, come on, Uncle Willie. <laughs> this is excellent work, but it's a, it's a concoction of uh, unrelated bones. Some animals, some human. It's, uh, if I had more time, I'd ask you how you uh, manage the joints for the wings. That took real imagination. Coming up with wings. No. This is not a trick. This is not for them tourists. This is the real thing. You don't believe me. <laughs> Willie, your talent is wasted out here. Now wait, Dr. Foley. I've never showed this to nobody. I thought you would be the one smart enough to understand. Listen to me. The Indians named this place Devil's Crossing in their own language back when they had a camp here. They lived here for hundreds and hundreds of years. The Indians told all about these devils, these spirits. They were real. I've got all the stories. I'm sorry, Willie. Dr. Bowley, them devils used to live up there in the rocks. Came all of a sudden, like, just played hell with the tribes. Then they chased them off with their sacrifices and their offerings. An old Indian told me it was his tribe's main legend for hundreds of years. Now, ain't that worth a book, ain't it? No! No free pictures. Now, either you make a deal with me to write this book 50-50 with my picture on the cover or you just get out. Get out. All right, Willie. 
You're on. Let's hear the story. Hey, why are you locking that? What for? It's getting late out now. I've got no good reasons, Dr. Bowley. I always bolt all the doors when the sun goes down. Remember what the uh, well the Indian word was for the devils in the legends? Let me see. Nakatachinkos. That's it. This great chief saw the Nakatachinko in the desert, and he had the tribe make costumes for all the elders, like the Nakatachinko, for the uh, ritual of manhood called Nonataya. Nonataya. Uh, what about, uh, can you recall the ritual itself? Uh, let me think. Uh, Just a minute. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, ritual, ritual. All the young men dressed for battle gathered around the Nakatekachinko and... that? I don't care to know, Dr. Seen. Oh, please, just get us out of here. Poor old guy. There I am, scared to death, but I managed to grab the tape recorder. I guess that proves I'm basically materialistic. You've got your research, Dad. I'm going to turn on the tape recorder and run it back a bit. I want to hear those sounds.
All right, what happened to you? Well, we ran off the road in the dark. <sighs> we want to go to a motel. Maybe in the meantime, you could fix this up so we can make it out of here. I'll see what I can do. There's a motel right next door. I tell you, this is going to be quite a job, though. Better get a jack. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I know it's terribly late, but we just had a car wreck. The car's being repaired over at the gas station. And, uh, we're pretty shaken up. Do you have something for us? I, you've got to understand that I... i got to be careful. I, I get some pretty weird types. Oh, some sure. pretty rough customers come up this road. And a woman alone can't be too careful. What? Uh, one room for you and the young lady. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'm Mercer Boley and my daughter Diana. Mm, room's right down here. Uh, was it Mercer? Yes. Tell me how it happened, Mercer. Uh, was it a big wreck? No, not really. Oh, we got a lot of doozies on this road. Mm. Is anybody killed? No, no. Here it is. Why, why don't you have a nightcap while your daughter gets some rest, huh? Well, I, uh, think... About two weeks ago, I had a traveling salesman who was staying here who drove out on that road and got totaled by a semi right in front of my eyes. Sure, well, sir. the engine went right through the front seat. And just a minute before, he had been saying goodbye to me. Well, I can imagine how he felt. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. What's that? I don't care to know, Dr. Molay. Please don't play that thing anymore. I can't stand to hear it again. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. You had a bit of sleep. How do you feel? I had a nightmare. What time is it? Noon. We've got to go tell somebody about last night. Well, about the old man, yes. The rest of it wouldn't make much sense until I have some facts. The skull, that's a fact. It's not the right kind of fact. But I'm going to have it carbon dated at the university when we get back to Los Angeles. Looks to be four to six hundred years old. What are we going to do about the old man? Well, that we'll have to report to the police. How are we going to explain it? I'm not going to. I'm going to let them puzzle about it. Sure, the old man was dead. Oh, yeah. The ceiling beam, real heavy, fell right on top of him. Then the lantern fell, and there was burning kerosene all over the place, and the whole thing went up. We couldn't get to him. We barely got out. 
There's nothing out there. They're gone. James T. Rieger. You got any ID, Rieger? Not on me. Come back clean the old man's place out after your little fun last night? I don't know what you're talking about. No, your kind never does. Come on, get it over. Come on, on the ground, get it. Come on, get down there. You go on down to the car in Radio Town, tell them we need a truck. We got five guys out here. These guys are always riding through. Gangs causing trouble. What gangs? We ain't riding choppers. Can't you tell these guys are just dirt riders? We've had nothing but trouble from this kind. What are the charges? You just quiet down. We've had it this time. I lay it out this way, bully. These guys came back last night and hit Uncle Willie's place while you were here. Probably just for kicks, or whatever loot they could find. But when we ran out, there was no one around. Yeah. Well, they could have been out behind the shed. So what do you plan to do with them? Take them in and book them. How can you assume they did it? <laughs> well, we found them here. Some of Uncle Willie's things on them. Loot, and that's enough to start with. We didn't do a thing except pick up some junk out of the ashes. You know, they could be telling the truth. They just happened to be riding by this morning. Yeah, well, then, uh, who caused all the trouble out here last night? Could have been one of these sudden winds. Shook loose some of the timbers. Well, you have your theory, Bully. I'll have mine. Why would you let those guys go to jail? Well, there's no way to stop that, darling. All I could do is cast enough doubt so the chief would take it easy. I didn't know you better. I think you were trying to hold back till you could capitalize on it. What you got in mind, another bestseller? All right. Let's suppose we tell them about the creatures. Let's suppose we tell them how they rocked the shed, a pretty big structure. 
how they shook loose big beams. We tell them, no, you tell them, how they overtook the car. You describe them and all the rest of it. Think they'll believe us? No, not till I get something tangible. Dead? Yes. Some kind of cold-blooded creature. Fascinating. It's repulsive. As he was dying, he looked up at me just like a human being, as if he were asking for help. What is it? I've seen them many times before, even before last night. You mean in your books? The gargoyles in Gothic cathedrals, Egyptian carvings, I never believed that they... But now, my book will be not only about myths and legends, but about reality. What do they want with us? Not us. They want the bones of their dead. We've got to get this body to L.A. They'll be back with this one, too. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Who do you think it is? It's Mrs. Parks, the manager. Now, let me in. Uh, I don't want to see this. What is it, Mrs. Parks? What is it? All that ruckus and fighting scared me to death. What are you two doing in there anyway? I had to get out of bed and get dressed. Now let me in. 
Well? It was nothing, really. Just a family argument. Some family. I am going to be listening. And the very next problem I hear, I will call the police. Oh, I've seen them all. Drunks, dopers. But I got a feeling I got a new one this time. Diana? Diana! Diana? I'd like to speak to the chief of police. I'm sorry, Miss Bowley. Chief's home in bed. I'm staying with the prisoners tonight. Well, I've got to talk to somebody about them now. You've got to let them go. Now, Miss Bowley, the chief just booked them this afternoon. I've got to hold them till tomorrow for the arraignment. But they're innocent. They didn't kill the old man. My father and I can prove it now. Hey, listen to her, man. Let us out. I can't do that. Only a judge can dismiss charges now. Well, call the judge. I'll show him the proof. But you've got to do it now. My father is leaving for L.A. tonight. <laughs> Look, Miss Bowley, I can understand you feeling bad about all this, but uh, why don't you just go on home and go to bed, huh? Listen, I'm really sorry about what's happened, and I'm going to do everything I can to get you out of here. That's a promise. You got a key? Now, come on, Miss Bowley. Just... Leave the men alone. You're not going to believe what happened. Try me. In our motel room, we have a huge, giant, dead animal. It looks like a lizard. Giant lizard. Only it has a beak. It really looks like a monster. Hold on, you got a, you got a giant lizard with a beak in your motel room. Yes, and it's called a gargoyle. My Gar father's a scientist. It's called a gargoyle. And last night at Willie's place, a bunch of these gargoyles attacked the building bunch and they of caused these a fire. Big, giant lizards with beaks. Yes. But... And there was a fire, and Uncle Willie got killed. And then we hey, grabbed the here, skull, and we ran to the... You and your old man sniffing glue back in that motel? Miss Bowley, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave right now. Well, I'm sorry you don't believe me. But I'm doing what I can to help you. Listen, thanks. I mean that. I really do. Sorry I lied. Now, you. The least you can do is walk me back to my motel. i got to stay with the prisoners. Better go with her, man. One of them Gar things is gonna get her. You pipe down and get some sleep.
Jesse, you got that state patrol yet? Phones are all out, right? Electricity, too. Oh, oh. I, I hid in my cabin while it was all happening. <laughs> Screaming and breaking. Okay, okay. Come on. They tore down Dr. Bowley's door. I don't know what was happening. <laughs> and that girl, that girl was, was, was screaming for help. All right, now, come on, Miss Parks. All right, come on. Now, sit down, take it easy. Now, did you see anyone? No. No, I, I was afraid to go outside. But something funny was going on about, a, about an hour before fighting in Dr. Bully's cabin. And that's when the Bully girl showed up over here? That's right. That's right. That's when that idiot tossed her out. And she was on to something, could have cleared us, and he tossed her out. I'm sorry, Ray. I just thought it would keep till morning. I thought, I thought she was trying to con us and letting these guys out. Hey, look, Chief, she talked to me last night. She told me what it was they had over there. They wanted to show you. Yeah. Tell me all about it. Oh, boy. Okay, she said they had some kind of a dead thing. She called it a monster. 
monster. That's what she said. She said it was part of the same bunch that attacked her and her father on the road and then killed the old guy. That's what she said. And uh, you expect me to believe that? You better believe it. Because it's true. Gory, I thought you and your daughter were gone. They took Diana. They overturned my car. I was unconscious. I couldn't follow them. But what are they? Gargoyles, creatures. What? What's the difference? Look, I want a search party. Now, state police. They're going to kill my daughter if they haven't already done so. Do you understand? All right, Jesse, you get a search party together. Send somebody after the state patrol. A search party? Who? We got no manpower. Everybody's scared to death this morning. They wouldn't leave their wives and kids after what happened last night. You got us. We got our bikes. We know the desert. No, no, no. What's to keep you guys from taking off in all directions? Well, you can't hold them anyway. I told you they had nothing to do with it. Let's get after them. That's all that counts. Yeah, I... Dog's ready to go, J.D. You get the state police and don't let anything stop you. Go to highway patrol office and have them bring plenty of men. Maybe a chopper, too, and then have them call the National Guard. Don't worry, we should be there in about two hours. Let's go. I'm All going. right, come on, let's go. I'm let's going. going. Oh, you okay? Yeah, yeah. You know how to handle that thing? Well enough. Don't worry, we got the best pack of mountain lion dogs in the country. Looks like God's got the scent. All right, come on, everybody. Let's move out of here. Come on, let's go. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather be sitting in here with you than out with that search party. <laughs> Me too. Diana. Let me go. No. Why? You can speak. Tell me why. These are my father's books. He teaches from them. Then... You must teach me, Diana.
gotta stop and give the dogs and the horses a rest. Uh, I said creatures. What kind of creatures? Yeah, what are we chasing? Well, there's one killed. I examined it. It's some form between reptiles and human. I think of a pretty high order of intelligence. At least they're well organized. Why haven't we seen them before? I don't know. But there have been outbreaks of things like this. You see them in the legends of a dozen different cultures, stories, paintings, sculpture, from uh, ancient Egypt to Babylon, Yucatan, medieval Europe. And they always look the same. It's as if they've existed along with mankind from the beginning of time. They were, well, they were the evil one, you see, the demons. The gargoyles. What's that add up to for us? Well, I think we have the same creatures here. They show up, oh, about every four or five hundred years. Uh, I'm guessing that that's their incubation period. And the eggs are beginning to hatch again. Huh. Something like the 17-year locust. Yeah, something like that. Why'd they take Diana? Well, in legends, they've been reported to take human women. Ray, over here in the gully, come on. Jesse, we better spread out. Okay, I'll take the dark canyon road. the others? There are perhaps maybe a dozen of us. We mean no harm. You have nothing to fear. Your people have nothing to fear. But they have never understood. Why do I have to stay here if you mean us no harm? Plugs found. Hey, there's a woman hanging from that pole. It's Mrs. Parks. I wonder what happened to the guy that was with her. Who knows? I guess that's supposed to scare us off. Hey, hold on, hold on. They still got the girl. Yeah, she's dead by now. Well, we don't know that. Look, 
Ray. They're going to use all the help they can get. What about it? Hmm? Come on, how about it? All right. What about you guys? Hey, whoa, what's wrong? I've had it. You too? Yeah. listening and learning speak in the desert close by men horses and dogs the eggs the hatching a winged one another breeder there'll be many many more by tomorrow we must stop them in the desert now Want to see the girl? Yes. Leave that. Follow me.
What have you done with my daughter? Do you think that you tricked me into bringing you here? You only tricked yourself. You and your daughter will never see another human again. Five hundred years we waited. And now our eggs have begun to hatch again. But we must have time. Time enough to grow strong before you and your kind destroy us. And we shall not die. It will be you and your kind that dies. What if mankind isn't ready to be wiped off the face of the earth? Hmm? Oh, you'll be around to see it, Bowley. <laughs> the end of your age. The beginning of mine. <laughs> what? Oh! Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pray read this and heed it, my account delivered with hope of redemptions to the Holy Fathers this first day of July in the year 1417 by Germaine d'Argent, a poor woman of Lordeaux. Go on, your voice pleases me. The sin was not my own, but forced upon me by the incubus, who of a night did slip into my bedchamber and taunt and seduce me with demons' promises until I was as if on fire. He was of uncommon height and finely built. A devil's face of frightful beauty that did put me in a spell. I had no will of my own, but did let the incubus do his will until I was driven mad. Diane, <laughs> don't worry. I have no need for you human. I am merely curious. <sighs>
lie. They're in the caves. I know the way in. I saw some of the gargoyle eggs, hundreds and hundreds. There must be tens of thousands hidden in there. Once they hatch, they'll spread out, cover the whole country. We've got to wipe them out tonight. We'll have the state police here in a couple hours. Oh, I'm not going to wait. Look, you don't I want to go in with me, that. then I'm going in alone. I'll go. I want to go. OK. How much gas in those cans? Well, one's full, the other's half empty. Well, we'll need all of it. See if we can force them out. Chief, if you and Jesse hide below, where they can't spot you, make sure they don't get away with Diana. OK. before you can kill us. Go. Alone you have a chance. The rest of you are finished. Not while there are two winged breeders left. It's only her wing. You can carry it. No! No! How clever you are. Your choice has allowed you and your daughter to survive. It also allows me and my kind to survive. Perhaps at the price of your supremacy on Earth one day. <laughs> <laughs> 